All right, so here we got a Bobcat S750. Now this one's already got a light on it. I just finished that one up. We got our last machine right here out of the six machines we're doing these on today. We are switching them out for better lights. So these are the ones we were running on them before, these $20 cheapy rotating ones. I started plowing snow with this guy last year using these machines, and I was using an amber LED mini light bar with like 48 LEDs. He seemed to like that a lot better because it was faster flashing than this thing. It was much brighter even in broad daylight. It was a lot easier to see. These things have weak magnets on them so they'd always fall off. Or other times you'd plug these things in and they just randomly not work. Even though the cigarette lighters work and the light wouldn't work. He literally had 10 of these things in his truck at any time to replace any busted ones. So this year what he wanted to do was upgrade to these new lights. All right, so now I got the tape undone. Uh, these were $35 a piece on Amazon, free shipping with Amazon Prime. 48 LEDs, 16 different flash patterns. These also are cigarette lighter plug, but what we're going to be doing today is hardwiring these into the Bobcat um, with a Bobcat switch. So we can use a cigarette lighter for better things like our phone chargers and stuff. Um, and then we can just quit wrecking the cigarette lighter plugs in general. Um, you can see here they come with a nice two-year warranty, all that good stuff. The way this one works is if we're not happy with it, gets condensation in it or something, and it quits working or whatever, all we have to do is contact them, and they will send us new ones, and we do not have to send the old ones back. So that's pretty nice right there, so we'll just get this thing opened up. This is actually really tricky to do one-handed. Um, you can see they come in a nice package here. You got a nice lens around them nice and clear right now we'll see how well these hold up if they don't they got a two-year warranty so it should be plenty anyways these have 16 different flash patterns so i'll get this cracked open here and you'll see kind of how it's hooked up a little tricky because they use so many red wires on it um this is that jumper wire for the ground right there what we're going to have here because this has a lighted switch the middle prong is going to be the power into the switch this other one here is going to be the power out and you can see how that wire leads up the cable and into the light so that's how we know that one's power out uh, because it's got the ground so that the little led light on the switch lights up that's what this jumper wire here is for you can see it goes over to the ground on the ground switch to change the pattern and then once again they use a red wire for whatever reason and that shares the same ground as the light ground so for a cigarette lighter plug, you can see both of those attached to the ground prong. If we were installing this on the machine and the machine wasn't already halfway pre-wired for us, you would put these both onto the same connector and you could self-tap them into the frame somewhere, add them to another bolt, um, anywhere that would be a sufficient ground. And then the yellow wire that comes out of the light or goes into the light, however you want to look at it, goes to that same switch. I know it's a little goofy because I'm holding it backwards. So here we go. The top switch on off is on the top ground switches on the bottom and you can kind of see maybe how yellow wire shares the same ground on this switch as the other two if that makes sense so it's just a little tricky but when you take this apart and you actually look at it in your hand it'll make a little more sense they use a bunch of red wires on this which makes it extra confusing for some people if you're a visual person where you think red means positive power because in this case only only two red wires <clears throat> will be hot <clears throat> the other two are grounds because that's a jumper wire that's also a ground wire why they do it that way i couldn't tell you but that's just how this is so i'm going to get this all undone here and get it set up to go on the machine and what we're going to need are a few different pliers uh, snips your strippers i prefer the snips over this set of strippers you can do it however you want the pliers are this one's to help pull some of the push pins out as well as to squish my crimp connectors that I have right here. Now, these are the weatherproof ones with the heat shrink on them. So you crimp it and then you get a something like a lighter and you can heat shrink the ends here. You can solder and heat shrink. You can just splice them together and wire them together if you really want. It all depends on your application, how you really want to connect your actual connections. I like connectors or solder and heat shrink. I don't have solder with me, so these are gonna have to do. They work just fine, it is what it is. And if they ever come apart and the light quits working, I'm gonna know exactly where those are and where to start looking. Um, these are the genuine Bobcat switches. You can see they're already labeled for the beacon. These also light up. Well, if you were to wire this in yourself, you're gonna have one of these as power in power out and i think one of these on the end is the ground i think this one's the ground on this switch i'm not sure of hand um, you can see bobcat has kind of a 
a different layout than a traditional switch for like $28 a piece. But conveniently, these machines are already pre-wired for these switches. So all I gotta do is pull the panel off, plug that switch in. So we'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna grab our Phillips head screwdriver we're gonna need. Um, we might need a flat head to pry these open. And then we're gonna need an, a 1 8 inch hex bit. Um, I got it on a ratchet. You can use a standard uh, Allen key wrench if you want. I don't like to use those, so I'm using the ratchet today. Um, we're going to unplug our wiper blade and stuff. Obviously, we're missing the uh, connection for the washer fluid for some reason on this one. And all we're going to do is we're gonna take these three screws out right here. These hold in the switch panel. Um, if you're going to use the factory wiring that these ones have for the warning beacon, you have to go onto the left side over here, otherwise you're going to end up having to run your own wires. Um, so for ease of use and using the existing wires that Bobcat gives me, we're gonna use this side. Um, so there's a push pin here and a push pin here. You pull out the middle piece of the push pin and then the whole thing will come out. Um, if you break them, don't worry about it. The parts stores often have them. So I'm gonna go grab my pliers. I'm gonna get those out and we'll be right back. All right, so you can see we got the push pins out here. Um, so to remove this panel, all you're gonna do is pull out on the bottom just like that. And then you're gonna pull down because you can see it gets tucked up behind that part of the paneling up there. You pull it out. You'll see um, the couple wires that are already plugged in for the existing switches and we got two spare plugs right here this one here with all the wires in it i'm not sure what this one is for offhand i'm sure bobcat would be able to tell you i don't know offhand but this one here that's got the three wires in it is what we're going to need for our switch there is a similar one over here but it's going to be wired backwards compared to the switch and two of those wires are always hot one is a ground so if you open the right side it is not the correct switch so you need to make sure you're using the plug on the left side Obviously, it can always be good to use something like a test light or a multimeter to verify your power and grounds, how much power you have and all that. Um, that was how I figured out that the other plug was not wired incorrectly, but was actually my error as having the incorrect plug in my hand. So that was how I decided I needed to check this side, and then I found the correct one. So to get these little face plates out, all you're going to do is come around the back here. These pop out real easy, just like that. Here, there we go. You can see it's just got some little fingers on it. Of course, now I forgot to grab the switch. All right, so once you get your switch here, put it in whatever panel you want. Um, I'm gonna put them in the top one because that's just how I've been doing them so far. I'm gonna grab my wire here, or my plug-in. I'm gonna make sure it's facing the correct direction and see if I can plug it in one-handed. All right, and there we go. So now you can see our switch is operational and how the light comes on, and that's why there's gotta be three wires. Just like I was saying, with that light being on there, that light needs to be grounded. So that's why they've got the ground there and then the two hot wires, one is power in, the other is power out. So I'm gonna get this pushed back in and we'll be right back again. All right, so we got that set back in place. You might have to fight with it just a little bit because of all the wires back there. Um, and then all you're gonna do here is you're just gonna put those push pins back in. You can see the outer piece goes in, push the middle piece in, you're done. Same with this one here. Push it in like that, then that piece in tighten up our three screws just like that verify the switch is still working yep obviously it's not doing anything right now because we don't have anything on the receiving end of things so we're going to show you where that goes so that runs down underneath the cab and then it comes up over to here and on the back of the cab you'll see as soon as i get this panel off there's a plug on the cab for the wires to run through. You can run them however you want. I like to just drill a hole through that little plastic plug and then that way the wires fit nice and snug through it. But to get this paneling off, you're gonna start with this piece here. There's gonna be the two hex drive uh, bolts right there. They're eighth inch. So I'm gonna get those off. And when you take this panel off, there's gonna be an, a clip underneath it here and a clip underneath it here in the back. But if you do break one clip on the back, not the end of the world, you still have the bolt there. Um, but just so you're aware, there is a clip there. So if you don't want to break it, try to be careful. It's a little tricky because the window seals in the way. But um, if you fight with it just right and have a little extra time, you can get it out. So we're going to get this cover off. All right. So here's that clip on the back I was talking about. You can see, once again, 
it broke. You might have to fight with this a little bit. Sometimes the foam here is stuck pretty good to it because um, you can see the defroster outlets here. Um, and then your heat for the cab actually comes up through the tube, through the cab and out your vents here. That's why this is the way it is and why it's got foam under it. You can see it just pulls out like that, real simple. Like I said, we are gonna be hardwiring these into the Bobcat today. We're not gonna bother with a pattern change. If we wanted to, uh, what you'd have to do is either find a way to have a switch just kind of dangle back here somewhere. Otherwise, all you'd have to do would be run one extra wire for the yellow light, bring it all the way down through the cab up to what would be your momentary stop switch or on off switch. Um, and then put the yellow wire onto one end of the switch and then run a ground wire on the other end of the switch and you can share it with the same ground on your power switch. Now, it is always good to double check your power source. Now, I already know what wires I need out of this plug. Um, if you bought the factory warning beacon for this, then it should just plug right in to this switch. You'd run the wire through this plug right here. You'll, you can see it there. Um, I can push it out from inside the cab, but I'm gonna leave it in so I can drill the hole through it. You just plug into this, mount your light, and you'd already be done. But because these are obviously aftermarket lights that we like a little bit more, we're going to snip these wires and tap into them for our power source. The way these ones have all been so far for me, like I said, it's always good to double check. There's gonna be the red and black wires that are right next to each other here. Not the other two red ones there, just these two. I like to snip them up here just a little ways, so if anybody in the future ever wanted to use this existing plug, you can easily splice back into it and you'd still have enough wire to do that. If you snip all the way down here, you're not going to have enough wire to splice back into this plug if you ever wanted to use it or if somebody else who might buy the machine in the future wanted to use it. We're going to snip those wires. We're going to go up a little ways just like that. That gets the plug out of the way. So I'm going to get these wires stripped here. I'm going to drill the hole through here. I'm going to run the wire through, um, get these connected, and we'll be back after I do all that. So here you can see we got the light on top, got our wire run down. If you wanted, you could probably find a way to fasten this to the cab. I'm just going to leave it alone because I don't want to drill any holes in the cab or anything. In our case, we really don't need to. These will be just fine the way they this are. This was the grommet that exists in the cab, and then this is the grommet that came with the light. So all I did was drill a hole through there. I drilled it to fit this grommet so that it would fit nice and snug in there to help keep it as watertight as possible. But by doing it this way, it's just gonna help keep as much out of there as possible unless you really want to add some silicone or something to it. We'll go back inside the machine here and get this wired up. You can see the wire comes through the cab there, comes up, down. I always leave a little extra in case I ever need to re-splice it um, or in case it gets pulled out. That way it has a little room to pull some of that out um, without destroying all the connections. You can see we've got our butt connectors here with the heat shrink on built in onto the end of each one this of them. This is the extra yellow wire that would change the pattern. Like I said, I've got it preset. These have pattern memory, so I don't have to worry about it ever again. All the machines are just going to run the same pattern. But if we wanted to change it, all I would have to do would be tap into this yellow wire, run it down and along the same wiring harness here. Um, and then I could put a momentary on off switch right here. And then the ground wire on this switch, I could put a jumper from that ground wire onto one of the pins of the momentary stop switch, and then put the yellow wire onto the other pin. And what that would do would be like taking the yellow wire, touch it to the black wire. It does the same thing as if you were to manually do it, but obviously it's better to have it on switch. Um, and that would be how you'd change the pattern if you wanted to do that. Before I button this all back up, I always verify. So if I turn the switch on here, you can actually see the reflection there, and if you look up in the mirror, you'll see the light's working good. Everything's working. So that's all because good. Because this is using the factory wiring harness that's already here, I know that it is already wired into a fuse, so I don't have to worry about that. If you were wiring this yourself and it did not already have a harness in here, what you're going to want to do is I recommend putting an inline fuse in the light. You can do either before or after the switch but usually not before your power source. <clears throat> so say if I were to tap into the ignition power, if this wasn't pre-wired and I wanted it to come on with the ignition, I would not put the fuse on the ignition wire. I would still put it on the wire of the light after it's tied into the ignition. That way it wouldn't blow the entire ignition because chances are the entire ignition would immediately blow the fuse depending on what size you put in. Small light like this, you probably want a real small fuse 
uh, like a 10 amp or something like that because these don't draw very much being LED. Um, but obviously, depending on what kind of light you install, make sure you know it's average current draw and it's maximum current draw in amps so you know what size fuse to put in. And then for this, all you do is you just kind of start with the top corner there. Make sure your wiring harness is out of the way here. That just pushes back into place like that. You're going to grab this cover here. You're going to line the holes back up just like that. And then you're going to have to lightly tap it back into place. And then you'll tighten these two screws. You'll be done with that. And then there you are. Your light's all wired and ready to go. Alrighty, and there we are. So from the inside of the machine, you can see we got all that button back up. We got our side panel back on, flip the switch on. And then from the outside, there's our light. You can see it's nice and bright, easy to see. Much brighter than the ones that we were using of the $20 rotating beacon. Um, these are gonna be much safer during the day because you can see even in a well-lit shop, that light is nice and bright. Hopefully it'll get people to, to realize us a lot more. So definitely ready to go for winter and hope that helped anyway. Uh, then you're able to get that light wired in. You can use virtually any kind of light you want. Um, just make sure that it meets the Bobcat current draw for that switch as for where it's wired. Otherwise you're gonna have to probably put a bigger fuse in. Obviously make sure you're always using the right size wires, connectors, that kind of thing, and make sure they're safe. That's it for this one.